Hello, Seekers. Welcome to Todd World, and Happy New Year. I sure hope your year has started off well, and uh, things are going as smooth as can be. And it's this time of year that we always look towards the future, trying to figure out, you know, what's coming, and we look with hope. And it always reminds me, when I look to the future, of, well, my, one of my favorite genres, science fiction. Now, we don't have flying cars, and uh, a moon base alpha yet, but you know, we're working on it. Of course, it might not be a good thing with those flying cars. I mean, let's face it, we haven't mastered 2D driving and now we want to add 3D driving. It's probably not the best idea, but who knows? Now, when it comes to science fiction, I tend to find three groups of sci fi people. Now, they overlap, I recognize that, but you know, sometimes they don't. And uh, I'm going to be careful here. I don't want to offend anybody. But there's three groups of science fiction fans, all right? Number one, there's your Star Wars fans, okay? Number two, there's your Star Trek fans. Number three, then there's your hardcore science fiction fans. Now, it's that third category I want to talk about tonight, um, especially because I, I want to especially focus on one individual. Uh, we did. We lost a great one uh, to COVID just at the end of this last year, and I uh, I, I want to make some time to actually talk about wh who I think is one of the legends that we uh, are going to miss. But first, let's do the cheesy intro. If your world has been overwhelmed and you just need to get away, you can rest in mind for a few minutes. Welcome to Todd World. Now, I know, I know. Some of you are probably already upset with me, and I want to make sure I deal with the perceived slight that you think I may have given the other two fan bases. You don't know the power of the dark side. Well, actually, I, I do, and I, I've known since 1977 when I saw it the first time. But in any event, I'm making a st distinction here, I know, but there is a caveat that I, I want to make. Recognize I am fans of both. Star Wars and Star Trek have been for a long time. But we have to recognize that Star Wars actually isn't about the future. It actually takes place a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But really, Star Wars to me is more like science fantasy. I think that's the technical uh, description that one gives to it. Now relax, relax. It's not a critique. It's not a criticism uh, of Star Wars. It's just a recognition. Uh, and plus, in all fairness, that definition comes from Lucas himself, the creator of Star Wars. So I kind of think I'm going to go with the creator's vocalized description of his own genre. Logical. I thought so too, Mr. Spock, but, you know, some people may still be upset. Now, as for the Star Trek, uh, if you're a hardcore trekker uh, from way back, uh, anyway, that's closer to the genre, but still has an idealized fantasy element. Indeed, it's a subgenre which we, as I said, call science fantasy because it has elements that defy the physics of science uh, and sometimes border on the mystical. But in it, we do find elements that are scientific. So I hear you if you want to object, but I'm not the one who classifies it as such. So don't argue with me. Argue with the so-called experts. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that you make the distinction that I am making when it comes to science fiction. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Well, work with me, Hal. Uh, I, I need you to, all right? Because pure science fiction is the world being presented to us as scientifically possible. Star Trek, although there are things in there that we have gone, you know, the communicator idea and, and the little screens, communications and things like that, it's still an element that's still beyond us, all right? And you still, again, have some of that mystical element that we find sometimes. But pure science fiction, again, it's scientifically possible and works within the constraints of science to tell its story. Now, I'm thinking of old school science fiction that goes way back to the pulp era uh, of the science fiction magazines in that area, where there was still this argument between science fantasy and science fiction. And it was still kind of hammering out the details. But there were some that still drew that line pretty sharp. And that brings me to the author I want to discuss tonight. 
That's Ben Bova. We lost him last year, and it is a loss because he's written some great stuff. And to a certain extent, he was, as one obituary tells us, the last of the great pulp writers of the 60s and 70s. And he gave us a lot of works that, in their time, despite being dated somewhat, they still were visionary. Now, Ben Bova wrote over 120 works, and he won the Hugo Award six times. He was the editor to Analog Magazine uh, back in the day, and even when Omni Magazine was around, he was an editor there as well. And so what we see is a man who, in his works, wrote about all kinds of ideas that are now actually part of our world. Welcome to the desert of the real. Yeah, it is the real world. Uh, and, you know, he did. He talked about cloning, virtual reality, uh, the notion that the moon had ice and water, uh, and more. Many things long before we actually proved some of this stuff or did some of these things. Now, he wrote several books, and the one I want to kind of focus on tonight is the Grand Tour series. It's about 21 books, and within it, he eventually kind of loosely brought them together, but there's several little story arcs that kind of tie together into a grand theme of colonizing the solar system. Now, I read several of these books a long time ago before I knew they were part of a series, and I think the series idea was maybe a later edition, uh, but you can now kind of read them all uh, as kind of a uh, an ongoing tale of man's reach out into uh, our solar system, into the planets beyond. Now, again, as I said, there are some aspects that are dated in these stories. But uh, Ben Bova talked about several issues, uh, again, that I think are still relevant to us today. He talked about environmental degradation, uh, as well as the dangers of industrialization when misused. He also kind of talked about the conflicts between secularism and religious fundamentalism, which we still wrestle with even today. Hardcore science fiction is more focused on technology and science, which helps us, us as humans expand and achieve without the reliance on the deus ex machina, which is, which is the god out of the machine, for those of you who don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It is the impossible made possible through science and not through anything else. Now, I have been working uh, through these books in order, again, rereading some, and I just finished the eighth uh, volume, uh, The Precipice now, and was in the middle of that when uh, I heard about his passing. And it struck because, again, we've lost a great writer that connects us to the past of science fiction's great historical moments, development of, of those. Now, we've talked about Ray Bradbury, but, you know, we haven't done Asimov or Clark or some of the other great ones, and eventually I'll get to those. But he did write some great things, and we have characters that are realistic uh, and compelling. Uh, he still creates really nice uh, uh, tensions and conflicts that, even when he resolves them, may not always be what I wanted as a reader, but resolves them satisfactorily, uh, or as the story dictates. So that takes a talented writer to let the story flow in the logical direction that it should go and still give us something great and entertaining. So in the end, I, I want to encourage you, maybe during this time uh, of this year and during the Read Harder Challenges, you uh, give him a try. You don't have to read the whole 21 vo volumes if you don't want to. That's not necessary. Again, there are small story arcs. The Mars series was really good. Uh, I'm kind of working through the... Uh, the Asteroid series, and that's a pretty good one, although I'm unhappy with some things about it, but but that's because it didn't do what I wanted it to do. And again, that's a good writer. Uh, he's writing to tell the story, not to pander uh, to people. So, well, are we pushing that 10 minutes? Oh, well, uh, we'll keep trying. Anyway, for those of you following the Read Harder Challenge who want to take my challenge. Uh, uh, I've started this week. Uh, I'm actually, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to post some of those. If you notice right after the cheesy intro, I'm, I'm putting a little uh, 
thing in there to kind of say, here's where I'm at uh, in this. I'm going to number those. I'll probably number them weird ways, but I'll try to make it clear that uh, the RH is the read harder numbers. And because uh, again, I've got several things on the burner that I want to try to read. Uh, and that'll push me on beyond the 19 into the 30, I'm sure. So uh, anyway, follow along again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please see last week's video. Uh, give it a like. Etc. I'm going to start off uh, my year list uh, with uh, the fantasy uh, category, the winner of the World Fantasy uh, uh, Award. Queen of the Conquered, I believe, is what it is. And so I'll talk about that maybe a little bit in the future. I just started, so I'll, I'll keep you updated. In any event, uh, let me know what is your favorite science fiction book or movie. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that little like button. Just, just, just tap it. Just tap it. And hit that subscribe button. It's it's a pretty good one too. And and that little notification thing to let you know uh, that I post these every Wednesday is uh, what our goal is. Uh, usually usually around six-ish. Uh, but uh, please, uh, and, and, you know, share this if you liked it. Uh, let me know uh, what you think. But most of all, most of all, please comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Again, as I've said many, many times, this channel is all about working in dialogue for us to share with one another uh, our favorites uh, in whatever genre uh, that we're, we're into and how we escape the madness that is raging out there. In the meantime, shall we wrap this up and do some kind of science fiction theme music over the closing? Oh, oh okay. All right. Well, uh, if we're going to get that upset about it, then uh, we'll just do the regular thing. Anyway, Cubs, I miss you. Uh, wherever you're at, I love you, and please stay safe in this crazy world. As smooth as can be, uh, and... Uh, And every time...